The bell rang five times, then ceased. It was five o'clock. They had only an hour left. We don't have a lot of time left. Let's go. Slowly, one by one, they followed Junpei out the bedroom. <laughs> Actually, before we get started, I was hoping you could do something for me. Junpei stopped in front of the door three and turned around. Ace, seven and lotus. Could you please place your palms on the red? Uh... Huh? Why? If we need to get to the shower room, why don't we just... No, we're not going inside. Once, you are, once you've authenticated, step away from the door. Why? Please just do it. Or perhaps you don't want to know who killed Snake and Clover. Junpei's implication was clear and Seven understood perfectly. Ugh, fine. What about you, Ace? Lotus? Very well. Sure. Fast jeder Satz von uh, Ace fängt mit very well an. <laughs> Quickly, they pressed their palms onto the red. Once they had finished, they stepped away from the door, as Junpei had instructed. Three asterisks shone from the red's display panel. Junpei approached it and held its bracelet over the scanner. He made quite sure he didn't place his palm on it and instead only brought his bracelet near it. The fourth asterisk appeared, just as Junpei had expected. It was possible to authenticate without placing one's palm on the red so long as the bracelet was brought near it. Junpei pulled the lever down. Door three opened like a hungry mouth. Nine long seconds passed. And the door shut, unfed. Junpei walked slowly back to the others who were waiting some distance from the door talking to one another. Santa and June had joined them as well. It looked as though they hadn't found a chance to break into the conversation yet. As Junpei approached, they turned to look at him. Curiosity plain on their faces. Before long, the other three did as well. Clearly, they were all expecting some answers. Thanks. I appreciate your cooperation. Clearly, they'd hoped for something more forthcoming. He continued. By the way, Ace, would you mind if I ask you something? What is it? Do you know who I am? Wh what kind of question? Just answer it, please. Who am I? You are Junpei. Of course. Who else would you be? Unfortunately, that's the wrong answer. Actually, I'm Santa. What? Ace's voice was full of surprise, but it was also tinged with confusion and fear. Everyone else looked nearly as surprised. Santa looked especially shocked to discover he was <laughs> actually someone else. If he spoke, however, the trap would be exposed. Junpei quickly continued. The clothes I'm wearing I borrowed from Junpei, and the clothes he's wearing are mine. We had it swap. That's ridiculous, impossible. So you're saying I'm not Santa? Well, of course you aren't. Why? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. One, seven, eight, three, nineteen is ten, also eins. <laughs> so. Yeah. But the four of us just opened door three. You can't possibly be Santa. Your bracelet number isn't three. It's five, right? Only then, when it was too late, did Ace realize his mistake. He set his jaw and glared at Junpei. You're exactly right. My bracelet number is five. As he spoke, Junpei lifted his wrist up to show everyone the bright red five on his wrist. Sorry, Ace. I tricked you. Of course I'm not really Santa. I'm Junpei. Who could possibly think I was? It's obvious I'm not. To think I was ridiculous. But I guess you couldn't see just how obvious it was. I asked you before, didn't I? What makes you so sure I'm not Santa? And you answered? If you were Santa, then door three wouldn't have opened for us just now. Most people wouldn't say something like that. That's their justification for why I'm not Santa, I mean. The first thing that would come to anyone else's mind would be the, wouldn't be the bracelet number. There'd be only one thing they'd say. One sentence. You don't have his face. Ace, 
You have prosopagnosia. Ha! Yes. Am I right? Junpei's voice was quiet and calm. He knew the truth. So did Ace. He could hear a sudden buzz of conversation from the others. Prosopognosia? What's that? Ich auch was zu sagen. He heard Lotus begin to explain it to them. Ace glanced at them, then turned back toward Junpei and sighed. Very well. I confess. I have prosopognosia. I cannot differentiate human faces. Is that what this is about? You want to mock me for my disorder? No, no, not at all. I'm not making fun of you at all. In fact, I feel kind of bad for you. No, the reason I brought this up is that there's an excellent chance the person who killed Snake has prosopognosia. Ace's face tightened, his eyes narrowed. What do you mean? Junpei leaned casually against the iron piping of one of the beds. I just come right out with it. I think it was you, Ace. You killed him. Junpei was suddenly very aware of five pairs of eyes on him. He had their undivided attention now. The room had grown very, very quiet. Junpei took a deep breath. That's ridiculous. What possible evidence do you have? I have three pieces of evidence. The first, think back to a few hours ago. You made us argue over the three doors here in the big hospital room. There was no way all seven people could go through them. Lotus suggested that we sacrifice one of us. Lotus looked away, away awkwardly. Junpei glanced at her and continued. Then you, A, said, I'll stay here. Why would you say something like that? It's pretty simple, really. You didn't want us you didn't want us to see the dead body in the shower room. You see if A stayed behind, there were only two do doors the rest of us could go through. Door 7 and 8. There was no way we could get through door 3, the shower room. You knew that, didn't you Ace? That's why you volunteered to stay behind. Come on now, I think that's going a bit far. I can understand if you're jealous of my bravery, but please don't devalue my actions. I only wanted to save the rest of you. Surely you can understand my altruism. Altruism, hmm? Junpei stared off into the darkness at something very interesting and lazily began to dig a persistent bit of wax out of his ear. You already knew, didn't you? You knew that whichever doors we took, eventually we'd end up back in the big hospital room. What on earth are you saying? Of course I didn't know that. How could I have? Really? Yes, yes. Pleading was not something they'd heard from Ace before. Junpei pulled a piece of <coughs> wax from his ear, glanced at it and flicked it off into it the darkness. So ah well, that's cool. I've still got two more pieces of evidence that say you're the killer. The second is that, as I said earlier, you have prosopagnosia. Then you mean to imply that a person who can't distinguish human faces must be a bad person? Junpei, they call that prejudice. No. I'm not that stupid. Then why? Well, before I explain, I suppose there's something I should tell you. The corpse in the shower room. It's not snakes. Wha what? Ace's face went pale. The others looked confused as well. If the body wasn't snakes... I didn't put it together right away, but there was something Clover told me. She said that snake's left arm was prosthetic. He'd lost his real arm in an accident. But the body we saw in the shower room, let's call him Guy X. Guy X's left arm was definitely fresh, uh, flesh and blood. In other words, Guy X couldn't possibly have been Snake. Oh god, no. Th th that's impossible. Ace had started muttering deliriously to himself, shaking his head back and forth. Junpei was long past caring. Let's say, hypothetically, that the killer didn't have prosopagnosia. If that were the case, he would immediately re realize that Guy X wasn't Snake. Even if the clothes were the same as Snake's, their faces would be completely different. It would have been obvious they were different people. And yet, they still killed him. Why? Why would they kill a stranger who'd only just shown up? On the other hand, if the killer did have prosopognosia, it makes sense. They thought Guy X was Snake and killed him. Wait, wait just a moment. Let's say you're right and I mistook Guy X for Snake. Even if I did, I would have had no motive to kill him. Why would I want to kill Snake? I can of it, can think of at least two motives. One, Snake knew about your past. If he ever revealed what he knew, that would have been really bad for you. You really didn't want that to happen. So to make sure Snake's mouth stayed shut, you killed him. 
Two. Snake had a grudge against you. You knew that, or at least you could have easily assumed it did. Even without exposing your identity, he was a threat to you. You never knew when you might be attacked. You couldn't ever let your guard down. Every moment was a moment he might try something. You didn't want that kind of danger hang over you. So you... Hey, hold on a minute. For the first time since the beginning of Junpei's explanation, someone besides Ace spoke. What's the past that Ace wouldn't want us to know? Why did Snake have a grudge against him? Look at this. He handed Santa a small piece of paper. Santa squinted at the paper and began to read. The nonary game was played once before, nine years ago. The person with the number two bracelet attended the game nine years ago. It was planned by the following four people. Gentaro Homo, the pharmaceutical CEO, punk, punk, punk. What is this? Slowly, Santa looked up from the paper. His eyes met Junpei's. It's the message from Zero. It was in the safe in the first class cabin. Then suddenly... Give me a break! Ace's face was red and shaking and his voice was full of fury tinged with desperation. That paper is a lie! Someone is trying to frame me! Me? You said me, right? Junpei's eyes narrowed and the trap began to close. Ace inhaled sharply. His eyes flicked off of Junpei to something, anything else. Wouldn't that mean that you're admitting you're Honguru, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical? Or am I mistaken? It was as though a switch had been flipped. The color drained from Ace's face and as he realized what he'd done, his eyes went wide. Very well, I admit that much. I am certainly the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceutical, Gentaro. So what if I am? I don't know anything about this nonary game that supposedly took place nine years ago. Everything on that scrap of paper is bullshit. Someone is trying to set me up, you see? First of all, first of all. Ace stammered as he tried desperately to work himself to a more tenable position. Uh, Junpei, you're claiming I did all this by myself. Think that over, all right? How could I have killed Snake all by myself? Not Snake. It was Guy X. I don't care who it was. You said it the killer put this other man into Dwarf 3, right? Yeah, maybe. Then I couldn't have possibly done that alone. I couldn't have opened Dwarf 3 with only myself and Guy X. Nope, you could have. What? <laughs> Ace's face was tight and his teeth were clenched. Junpei fixed him with a level stare. The trap was about to close. Actually, Ace, when you were unconscious, I took something from you. Remember when you were injected with that anesthetic and fell asleep in the big hospital room? Yeah, back then. I took this. Junpei put his hand into his pocket. No, you couldn't have! Ace's right hand moved. Junpei smiled. Got you, Ace. Your right hand there tells me all I need to know. You wanna tell me what you were so worried about? What's in your pocket? the number 9 bracelet, isn't it? Ace, Guy X and the ninth man's bracelet. That was all you needed to open door 3. 1, 2, 9, 12, 1, 2, 3. That's how you killed Guy X all by yourself, Ace. All you needed was the number 9 bracelet in your chest pocket. Ace lowered his hand from where it had stopped halfway to his pocket. He looked down at the floor, his face hidden from Junpei. All he could see was the corner of Ace's mouth twitching like a dying fish. If you want to play innocent, that's fine by me. Go ahead. Tell me I don't have the bracelet, if that's what you want to do. But if you could take off your coat and hand it to me, I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from you by force. Right, Seven? Yeah. It'd be my pleasure. Seven cracked his knuckles with a sound like gunfire. <laughs> 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 Phoenix Wright character. Schreist er sich die Perücke. Ace roared with laughter. He threw his arms wide and his head back and laughed, filling the room with a sound that scarcely belonged there. Then it stopped. His arms came down and his head dropped to look straight ahead at Junpei. His face was flat and cold, devoid of any emotion. Well done, Junpei. 
as you correctly, as you so correctly deduced, I have the number nine bracelet. I retrieved it while we were searching for the missing hardware, for the red. I left the room I was supposed to search and headed to the first class cabin on B deck. His voice showed no emotion, no sense of remorse or interest. It was almost bored, as though he were reciting an especially dull corporate letter. My purpose was to obtain the number 9 bracelet. 9 is a potent ally in the non every game. Adding 9 to any set of numbers won't alter the digital route. Da ist ein Beispiel. Da ist noch ein Beispiel. Da ist ein drittes Beispiel. As you can see, 9 is a very useful number here. With it, one can go anywhere with anyone. So I made for the first class cabin to obtain it. Ace successfully acquired the number 9 bracelet. He also found an unexpected bonus, the knife the ninth man had been holding. He slipped both of them into his chest pocket and left as quickly as he'd come. He walked down the stairs and headed back to where he was supposed to be. That was when he met Guy X and mistook him for Snake. Snake was on his way to the large hospital room and had not noticed Ace behind him. Ace made sure it stayed that way. He followed the man wearing Snake's clothes to door 3. When the man stopped, he walked up behind him quietly and called out, Snake. The man turned to look at Ace. He said nothing, no words came out of his half-open mouth. He seemed dazed, somehow almost like a man half asleep. Perhaps he had been drugged, it didn't matter to Ace. Ace was certain that the man was Snake. He knew Snake had been part of the Nonary game nine years before. Snake hadn't recognized Ace immediately, but he was blind. That much made sense. Why then hadn't Snake said anything to him? Surely he hadn't forgotten what had happened to him in the Nonary game, but not once had he attempted to confront Ace. Perhaps his lack of sight had prevented him from recognizing Ace, or perhaps Snake had conspired with Zero to deceive Ace. In either event, he was a threat, and it was better to deal with him sooner rather than later. Ace's mind was made up, he moved. He held the number 9 bracelet over the red. He waved his own bracelet in front of the red and finally grabbed Snake's arm and shoved his hand against the scanner panel. The door opened. Ace threw the man through it. Nine seconds later, the door shut. 81 seconds passed. The man inside the door passed away. After that, I returned to my post as though nothing has happened. had happened. After conducting my own search, I returned to the large hospital room when the 1 a.m. bell rang. Ace's eyes were cold and his cheeks were hollow and pallid. When he spoke, only his lips and tongue moved. The rest of his face was eerily still. Junpei glared at Ace. He took a deep breath and thought about the next question he had to ask. He didn't want to. He knew what the answer would be. He just didn't want to hear it. Junpei swallowed, then spoke. Ace, did you kill Clover? Yes. Why? Why did you kill her? She was Snake's sister. It was possible he had told her something dangerous. Additionally, she had gone through door no number one. It seemed likely she might have found it. Found what? Why don't you go through door one yourself? Perhaps it's hidden somewhere. Seven and Lotus interrupted. Yeah, but Lotus and I went through door number one too. We didn't see anything suspicious. Yes, I thought as much after I heard your report at the central stairs. I doubt the two of you could find it. But perhaps Clover was different. Perhaps she had found it. I was therefore desperate to find her. And at last I did, in the first class cabin. I spoke very calmly. Did you see it? See what? Don't act as if you don't understand. You were in the captain's quarters, weren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? Hmm. Very well. By the way, what are you doing here, Clover? Well, what? Nothing. There's blood on your shoes. Looks fresh. Did you go take a look at the ninth man's corpse? I see. The silence suggests that you noticed. You saw something, didn't you? 
You saw that his bracelet was gone. Clover ran. She made for the exit, but Ace stood in her way. You aren't going anywhere. He caught her by the collar as she passed and threw her to the floor hard. She leapt back up and darted past him into the hallway. Ace followed at a run. He was faster. Jeez. That was how I killed Clover. His face hadn't changed. If he felt guilt or remorse or anything one might feel after taking the life of another human being, it didn't show. You son of a bitch. Seven's whole body trembled with rage and his voice rumbled with hate. Santa's eyes were bloodthirsty and Lotus and June's face were distorted by anger and hatred. Ace looked at them and smiled. It was a cold, cruel thing with no humor in it. He shook his head and sighed. I admit it. I've lost. I have lost completely and utterly. But don't understand, Junpei. Misunderstand, Junpei. I didn't lose to you. I lost to Zero, not you. I am rather disgusted with myself for falling into such a simple trap. And it was a trap, make no mistake. I was trapped and manipulated by Zero. The man I killed in the shower room. If he wasn't Snake, then I have no idea who he was. But he was wearing Snake's clothes. And that was no coincidence. He had also been injected with something that reduced his cognition and prevented him from identifying himself or resisting me. And we can't forget the components that were removed from the rat before we arrived. I have no doubt that Zero planned all of this. Zero made sure I would kill that man. It follows, of course, that Zero knew what? Everything I do. Okay. That I would try to take the number 9 bracelet. That I would try to kill Snake. Everything. Suddenly Junpei remembered the paper he'd found in the safe. He remembered the last words Zero had written on it. I must punish them. For the innocent lives they sacrificed. This is the only warning they will receive. That innocent souls might be saved. I now state the truth. Zero. And he remembered other words. Words he heard from Clover. I think Zero is one of us. One by one Junpei looked at the five people standing in front of him. Ace, Santa, June, Seven, Lotus. Zero is one of us. No Junpei paused. There was one more person. Snake. It was clear now that the man who died in the shower room was not Snake. That meant that Snake was almost certainly still alive. Perhaps Snake was Zero. Perhaps Snake had made Guy X wear his clothes so that he would appear to be dead. Where was Snake now? Perhaps he was somewhere laughing at them. If he was Zero, surely he had lied about many other things. Was he watching them? Sehr mysterious. Das ist eine super, super Stelle. Ja, 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 ich mag das total. Ja. Well, I believe I've finished with my confession. Why don't we get moving? He sounded as if he just finished doing nothing more exciting than describing the weather. For Santa, it was the last straw. What the hell is this shit? You aren't going anywhere, you son of a bitch. We're going to leave your ass here to rot. Why? Because I killed Clover? That's ridiculous. Why are you so upset that I killed the little bitch? She was nothing to you. A stranger you only met a few hours ago, am I wrong? You bastard! Seven roared and lifted a fist that would likely have shattered Ace's jaw, but someone else was faster. It was Lotus. She stepped toward Ace, raised a fist of her own, and drove it straight into his nose. <laughs> You've got some fire, don't you? I confess. I rather like a tough woman. He sniffed and wiped a small th trickle of blood from his nose with a raised eyebrow. Well, maybe you'd like another one then. Ah, uh, before that, let me give you one of my own. Huh? Lotus scarcely had time to blink. Ace snaked his arms around her and pulled Lotus' back up against him. In the same motion, he reached into his coat pocket. It was a gun. 
the revolver. Almost lazily, he tilted it to point at Lotus's head. If any of you so much as blink, I won't hesitate to pull this trigger. I've already killed two, no, no, three people. Don't think I'm not ready to make it four. Three people? What do you mean? Huh, very well. Let me take this opportunity to illuminate you. The person who killed the ninth man was me. Although I suppose to be more accurate, I encouraged him to get himself killed. While we were examining the main staircase, he came to me and told me his name. I recognized it at once. So I gave him a little push. Just a little bit white lie. It seems the settings for the dead were altered. Not only requires a single person to deactivate the detonator and the bracelet. Investigate what's beyond door 5. We'll meet again later. Okay, have a good one guys. I'm going off ahead now. Ich weiß nicht mehr, wie ich den gesprochen habe. Ja, well then. Shit! Why is it stopping? God damn it, you lied! Open the door! Please! I'm begging you! Help me! Please get me out of here! Get me out of here! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god! There's no time left, listen! I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! It was him! I'm not going to say his name! It was him! Ah! Vielleicht hat er sich auch nicht an den Namen erinnert. Und da haben sie auch noch keine Namen zugewiesen gehabt. Glaube ich. Das ergibt keinen Sinn. Aber ich kann auch nicht genau sagen, wieso. Wieso ergibt das keinen Sinn? Kann ich dir noch nicht sagen. Achso. Also der wusste, der, der kannte den auch. Nee, dass der den. Also das wird ja hier auch stark impliziert, dass er ihn auch sofort wieder erkannte. Aber vielleicht kann er sich ja trotzdem nicht an den Namen von denjenigen erinnern. Und selbst wenn er den Namen kannte, das hätte er ja den ganzen anderen Leuten nichts gebracht. Aber warum hat er den eigentlich Ace genannt? Weil die zu dem Zeitpunkt noch nicht diese Namen verteilt haben, soweit ich weiß. Okay, aber der, der hätte den richtigen oh, Namen müssen. Obwohl ich, ich bin mir auch nicht ganz sicher, ob die, den, nicht sicher, ob die, die Namen da schon verteilt Ich glaube, die hatten ihn davor verteilt. Und als das sie den gefragt sein. haben, was sein, wie ja, er genannt ja, werden dachte er. Irgendwie so weiter. Ja. Ja, ja. I had four reasons to kill him. Das sind viele Gründe. One. As I said before, the nonary game, the in the nonary game, the number 9 bracelet is of utmost importance. If I had allowed him to keep such a useful tool, he, or it, would have become a threat to me. As such, I decided that he should be eliminated early on. 2. I wanted the number 9 bracelet. If I could manage to obtain it, it would be able, I would be able to manipulate the game as I saw fit. I would be unable to acquire the bracelet unless its owner was dead. 3. Even setting aside his number, he would have been nothing but trouble for me. He was aware of my past. He knew what happened here nine years ago. It was important that I eliminate him before he was able to disseminate this information. 4. Lastly, I wish to conduct a simple test. A test to see if this nonary game was serious or a poor attempt at a joke. I needed to be quite sure. As such, I encouraged him to act against the rules so that I might observe the outcome. Junpei glared at him. I don't get your third motive. What the hell happened nine years ago? Didn't I say? The nonary game was played. I planned it out and I conducted its execution. Why? What on earth was it supposed to do? I don't really think I have any obligation to tell you that. Ace smirked. He was trying to provoke them and it was working. Although Ace had paid very little attention to Lotus after catching her, the gun had never wavered from her temple. She looked quite pale, and when she spoke, her voice shook. Hey, man, hey, what's with this gun? Where did he get this? Why don't you tell her, Santa? Santa ground his teeth and glared at Ace. On the other side of door six, we found the gun in the coffin in the cargo room, right? The bastard must have grabbed it when we weren't looking. Indeed, I did. That was pretty ser That was a pretty serious mistake, you know. Just saying you intended to leave it behind. Ace laughed, a short, deri derisive, deri derisive kind of. snort, and gave Junpei a sickeningly pitying look. Well, there's much time left. I'll be off then. Where are you going? Do I really need to explain? I had assumed it would be obvious. I have the number 9 bracelet. And now I have Lotus. Does I get 9? Wasn't there a door with a 9 on it? In the other room that looked like a church? That's where you're going, isn't it? And how do you know that? 
Santa told me about it while we were looking for clover. I see. Well, you are correct. That is my destination. But now I must say goodbye to all of you. Ah, and please, don't forget my warning. Move and I'll pull the trigger. I don't need her life to open the door, you know. As he spoke, Ace began backing toward the door, practically dragging Lotus behind him. Junpei, Santa, June and Seven stood frozen. Ace had the face of a man gone mad. They had no doubt he would pull the trigger. Ace had reached the exit. He forced Lotus to open it and turned the and addressed them once more. Don't worry, don't. Goodbye. Then he stepped through the door. Yeah.